welcome back to Emma Russell's studio. I'm Emma. If you are new here, this is a channel where I create tutorials to help you get better at watercolor. Whether you're a beginner, whether you're trying to refine your skills to be able to sell your own artwork, or whether you are just a hobbyist who is wanting to learn something new and understand something that is very fun and fluid and joyful, you are in the right place. Today we are actually going to be painting one flower with only using one color. And I am going to show you how you can make that painting, that piece, that composition really interesting with different techniques featuring opacity. So grab your paintbrushes and your paper and let's get started. So to start out, we are going to be using permanent rose today. That's going to be the color I am choosing. If you prefer something else, that's totally fine. I'm going to put a little bit right here on my tray and I'm going to have some watered down a little and just keep some of the straight pigment. I have my Canson Extra Large 140 pound watercolor paper. But you can use whatever watercolor paper you would like. I'm just really wetting this pigment over here and leaving some that is very opaque and just making these oval-like shapes in a circle for the petals of our poppies. We're painting poppies and we're going to make another one over here on the right so your brush will be at a 45 degree angle as you go around in a circle and then I'm going to show you a different way you could also paint these and then we'll come back to these. So I like to sometimes make dots of a circle for the center and then kind of make this C shape and scrub it in so it forms this rounder petal shape. Um, and this comes with practice. There's no correct way to do it, but you can then go over the ones we did with the little oval shapes and just fill that in. Sometimes doing the oval shapes first help as you're starting out and then you can go to do the one like I did above. So let's then go into this really deep pigment and just add a tiny bit of water and we're going to then go around on the inside, just make some dots, it'll bleed in, that's part of the beauty of it. But you can see already how there's different lights and darks and that's really what's gonna add dimension. So any way you create depth in a painting is by having lights and darks, highlights and shadows. So here now I'm making a darker flower and I am just using that C curve shape and going around the center, leaving the center white and then adding a bit of the center. And then I'm gonna put a little bit more paint in the inside, just rinsing my brush a little and leave a little bit of white space. Now I'm going to make another flower down here. It's a little bit lighter. I haven't even had to dip my brush in the paint yet, but I'm just getting those petals around. And you can kind of practice by putting your flowers in different positions. So I'm going to then use some of the darker pigment to add some shadows for the existing flowers. I'm gonna make a flower going to the right where you're just kind of seeing kind of the backs of the petals. So it's facing away from you. Um, you can't see the inside because it's over more towards the right. So to do that, I kind of start in one centered spot and just fan out my brush. So I press and lift, press and lift, and I go around in this shape and that creates the petals. Um, so the, they're all starting from the same point so it looks more natural. And now I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush and paint another flower over here. And this one, you are seeing it open up a little bit more. It's going off to the left a little bit, but you can still see the inside because of the angle it's being painted at. So you can practice in all sorts of ways. The great thing about using one color is it just helps you just think about placement and think about what you want your composition to be a, of without having to then make the extra decision of picking the colors that you're working with. So I've found that a lot easier when I'm painting a composition to just start it off, maybe in my sketchbook or on an extra sheet of paper, and just use one color that can really just help you get the values correct in your painting. Um, and it's a great way to experiment and just kind of let loose and not have to think extra. So I'm going to scrub in those petals over here on the left now. Um, it's a little, pretty much the same opacity. And I have a full video 
of opacity if you are having trouble understanding this where I kind of show my exercises of more of a light water to rich cocoa ratio. Um, I will link that video down below where you can see how to create opacities and create your own opacity chart. But here we're actually putting that into play. So you're seeing it in action while painting flowers. So I have that one up top. I'm gonna add some details with that more pigmented rose color and I'm going to just put some little lines here around the center of the flower. Go in here and see that flower right there? I can already tell the depth of it already just from adding another layer. And it can be a little bit darker, it could be really dark, you could have a lot of contrast. You get to play and decide what you are going to add to it. So now we are going to paint two more flowers. We're gonna put one over here on the right, facing the right, so we're doing that fanning out of our brush, and it's a little bit darker of an opacity. And then we are going to go and fix those petals up a bit and do one more, so add a little more water to your brush to lighten the opacity, maybe dab it off on the paper towel, give it a little bit more pigment. So I have a light center, and then I'm scrubbing out these petals using that more C formation of my brush and maybe adding a little bit of dark value to the top and then some dark value in the center. And then let's do one more actually. Up here, wipe away some cat hair. So I have the center I painted and then I'm going to make some larger petals over on the side. So there's no right way. You can try the C curve to put your petals around, but really, if you're just getting a round shape, that'll work. Um, and now I'm going to add some lines around the center there. Just pull it out and we are going to then add some stems and leaves to all of our flowers to kind of make it feel like a fuller composition. Yeah, I'm gonna start up here, go and put the stem down. I'm gonna do a little bit of a lighter opacity. Gonna make some leaves down here, just some quick leaves. If you don't like how they look, we can always cover them up later. I will probably put another flower up here later with a darker opacity once this dries. So wherever you find where the center meets, that's where your stem is gonna come down from so it looks more natural. Um, and kind of just try to balance out the composition. So you see we need some stems over here. We can probably add some more leaves and details to our left-hand side because it's a little more empty. And just add some leaves where you see fit and then we'll just put some dots and some tiny leaves as well. So I'm going to add a stem here and there, maybe there, a little more at the bottom and to this one, more. And you're just like holding that brush loosely, fanning out the leaves. And now I actually need a little bit more pigment because you can see I have ran out so we're going to get some more of that, put it there on our palette, and we are going to go in with the remainder of our leaves. So I'll show you what I mean by those. They're kind of just randomly, we're gonna just do some quick dark dots and leaves all over the page. So I'm gonna put a flower here because I don't like where, how that leaf went, and I'm just gonna make a really opaque flower. I'm going to make a stem for it, and then I am going to just put another one right up here. Get that around. You're just seeing the bottom there. Make a little stem there where it connects. I like how that looks. And I'm gonna get some more pigment and now kind of just darken and add some shadow to some of the flowers before I add those dots and leaves. Let's just add a few more dots here. And now that I've added my finishing touches, we're gonna go in with those leaves and the dots that I have mentioned beforehand. So I'm going to get a little bit more water on my brush and I'm going to go and put those on the page after that flower. 
actually, let's do one more flower here. Really don't like the way those leaves turned out, so I just wanted to add a little bit more of a flower there. Gonna fix the leaf. The great thing is that you can have such a contrasting opacity on top. So see, we have that really light leaf and we can just put dark over, can either cover it completely or it can go partially to the side. So here's the leaves. So you're pressing and lifting on the one side and then the other, and then you can just paint some dots, literal dots all over the place, fill in any spots where it's white and it feels like it needs something there and just go crazy. And we will just keep doing that and finish it up. And as we finish it up, I want to thank you so much for joining this video. I really appreciate you coming, you watching and learning with me. I appreciate you so much. Thank you all who are here and please like and subscribe this video to this video if you're interested in seeing more of my work and learning more. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next time. Bye.